Yesterday, we got some absolutely crazy news as Pascal Siakam from the Toronto Raptors was officially traded to the Indiana Pacers. Woj broke this. We're going to talk about everything that goes into this deal. The future. Can the Pacers now win the NBA Finals this season? Y'all can let me know in the comments what you think. I don't know. We're obviously going to have to see. Also, who won this trade? Did both teams win it? Did the Pacers win the trade or did the Raptors win it? We're going to talk about all of that. And finally, we have the first all-star caliber player moved. Obviously, Zach Levine is being heavily rumored to be traded soon. So we'll talk more about that in a second. Obviously, Lori Markkinen also in trade rumors. DeJounte Murray, even Andrew Wiggins. I know he's not all-star caliber anymore, but we got some other guys. Pascal Siakam is the first to be moved so but if you are new let's get into it so yesterday at 2 18 p.m the noti went off if you guys are into the nba a lot i'm sure you have on woge's noties or maybe shams they both tweeted it but woge was the first one now i was on the way to the dentist so we know when the og on an trade went off i made a video asap i was one of the first youtubers to make a video about it and talk about it i got that content out right away but i was literally an hour away from my house and i know it's kind of crazy my dentist is an hour away i just moved so it's it's a long story but i was on the way to the dentist that's all you gotta know i got this noty breaking the indiana pacers are finalizing a trade to acquire all-star forward pascal siakam in a deal that will send bruce brown jordan nuora and three first round picks to the toronto raptors new orleans will be a third team in deal sending kira lewis to the raptors now this was a weird trade because when a lot of players like of this caliber get moved, there's like a big shock. Like you're like, holy shit. Like you start texting everybody like, oh my God, this is crazy. But a day before this, I believe, maybe it was two days. I think it was the day before this trade actually went down. We heard news that the Pacers and Raptors were in talks to trade Siakam for three first round picks. So it was already kind of a thing like, this is probably gonna happen. So it was just a matter of time, a matter of just waiting. So when it finally did happen, I feel like people kind of expected it in a way. Now, who won the trade? And I'm a believer in that both teams can win a trade. Usually what ends up happening is whoever is the best player in the trade is the team that ends up winning it. At least that's what people say. But there's a lot that goes into this because as we know, Pascal Siakam is on the last year of his deal. So he's a rental, but the Pacers are going to definitely be trying to recruit him extend that contract and re-sign him so this is just a little bit of an early kind of free agency for them because now Siakam's going to be in Indiana he's going to be with the team they're going to be showing him like look we're actually pretty good you want to be here sign with us so it's kind of smart because I mean they're probably going to go after him in free agency but if you wait to free agency honestly the Pacers probably don't get him there's going to be a lot of teams there's going to be teams like the Pistons who have so much money in cap space and I know they're not an attractive place for players to go. But I'm just saying, there's a lot of other teams that have a ton of money. But if you bring in Siakam now, again, you kind of you kind of can get him used to the team. Now, the Pacers received Pascal Siakam and a second round pick. The Raptors received Bruce Brown Jr., who's on the last year of his deal. But I think he has a club option, so he will probably be a Raptor next year as well. They also got Jordan Nuora and Kira Lewis Jr., was thrown into the trade from the Pelicans because they had a whole luxury tax issue where they had to get rid of some money. So they got him in the deal and three first round picks. That's kind of the headline. Obviously it's nice. You're getting Bruce Brown Jr., Jordan Noir and Kira Lewis. Like that's not anything crazy or nothing to get really excited about, but three first round picks. Now, when you first hear three first round picks for Siakam, who essentially is a rental, you're like, whoa, like that's a lot. But when you think about it, there so the picks are this season's first round pick i believe for the pacers now they're going to be in the playoffs it's a matter of how far they go you know this is probably gonna be a late first probably somewhere in the 20s then the other pick is a first from either the clippers the the rockets or the thunder i don't know a bunch of teams that are really good so it's another late first round pick and then it is a 2026 first from the Pacers. And if they re-sign Siakam, they have Halliburton who is already playing in an all NBA. Well, maybe not because he's probably not all NBA, but an all-star starter. Well, maybe Halliburton's all NBA 13, but all-star starter player Halliburton, he's already playing like that. So three years from now, he'll probably be better. You re-sign Siakam, you got Miles Turner, you got this really good team. These picks are gonna be late first. So it's not that crazy, honestly, 
I think the Pacers won. My initial thoughts was that the Raptors won because you're bringing in three first round picks for a rental. I mean, so th this is hard to judge right now. It's just hard to judge because it's going to be something we have to wait and see what happens. Because if the Pacers don't re-sign Siakam, then they just, they got fully, I'm not going to say they got fleeced, but like that's bad because are the Pacers going to win it all this year? We'll talk about that more in a second. They definitely have a way better shot now that they're bringing in Pascal Siakam. But if you don't win it all and you lose Siakam in free agency, he doesn't end up signing with Indiana, goes somewhere else. I, I don't know where, but and you just gave up three firsts and Bruce Brown. I don't think Bruce Brown's that big of a deal, but three firsts for a chance at Siakam, that would be pretty bad. And then also we're going to have to see what the Raptors do with these three first round picks, because maybe they end up drafting a player that turns out better than Siakam. If I have to pick a winner, I'm going to say the Pacers won just because I think they are going to extend and, and re-sign Siakam. A lot of people think that you could, you could ask a lot of people in the NBA world. They, they kind of seem like the Pacers are doing this, knowing that they will be able to re-sign Siakam. And I remember Siakam saying that whoever he goes to, like he wants to go to a team that he's going to re-sign. So I don't know if the Raptors and them and him talked about this and, and he was like, yeah, I'm cool with, with re-signing. I, I don't know, but I know Siakam is looking to get a big contract. And the Pacers doing this trade, bringing him in on pretty much half a year, giving up three firsts for him. I mean, they're kind of showing him, we want you here long term. So I think that's that's good for them. So the Raptors are obviously doing a lot of trades lately. Masai Ujiri turned OG Ananobi and Pascal Siakam into Emmanuel Quickly, RJ Barrett, Bruce Brown, Jordan Nuora, Kira Lewis, three first round picks and a second pick. So the way I look at this is they, they didn't go into a full rebuild. Obviously, you still have Scotty Barnes. You're bringing in some solid players. You got Quickly and RJ. Even Bruce Brown is a solid role player. You kind of got the actual players for now with the OG on an OB trade. And then the Siakam trade was more for the future. That's where you brought in your pick compensation or whatever you want to call it. That's where you got your draft pick assets. I think what they got for the OG on an OB trade with Quickly, RJ, um, I think that's that's a good that's a good haul. I like what they did there with Siakam though. I think they could have got more. I don't know if teams were willing to give more, but what I would have liked to get is another you know young player like an Emmanuel Quickly or an RJ Barrett. I'm just saying that caliber of a player with some potential. Like you're bringing in Bruce Brown, we kind of know what what he is at this point in time. You're getting three first round picks. But I would have liked to, you know, bring in like Jairus Walker or bring in Benedict Matherin or maybe Obi Top. And I don't know, that's probably a stretch, but you know what I'm saying? I would have liked to get at least one, you know, young, potentious piece with these uh, draft picks for Toronto. So is this a good trade for the Pacers? Is Pascal Siakam a good fit for the Indian Pacers? Now, shout out to JJ Reddick because I watch him a lot. I feel like a lot of people that are into the NBA watch you know his show and his podcast and stuff like that uh so this stat is from him he said Halliburton is number one in the league in fast break assists which is not that surprising he leads the league in assists and we know he's probably the best passer in the league or one of the best passers so number one in fast break assists Pascal Siakam number one in field goal percentage in transition so the Pacers we already know they played a crazy pace I actually just checked the Wizards are at a faster pace than them I thought the Pacers were number one the wizards actually passed them so i don't know how but when we look at offensive rating they're having one of the best offensive you know seasons ever and then you're bringing in pascal who runs the break really good i mean this is like a perfect match and speaking of pascal going to different teams he was rumored to go to the warriors some of these other teams this is like the perfect fit because you got miles turner who's at the five he can shoot a lot of teams have bigs, like say the Warriors with, you know, Kevon Looney or whoever they're gonna run at the five that can't shoot. Pascal Siakam is not the best three point shooter. Now, I think with Halliburton, we should see that number rise. I'm not saying he's gonna turn into, you know, a Carl Anthony Towns or someone that's just gonna be chucking threes like a Julius Randle. But when he does shoot, he should be getting better looks because you got Halliburton getting you the ball. He, he finds people, he makes his teammates better. So I expect his efficiency to slightly improve. But this is perfect because I think with most teams, you could have like one non-shooter. Like one non-shooter is cool. Pascal is kind of that. And then you got Miles Turner at the five. You got Halliburton and you could just surround him with whoever. Naismith, Matherin, Buddy Heald. I don't know. They got a ton of just 
two guards and three guards on this roster. So this team is going to be even better offensively, at least I expect. I mean, how do you even get better when you're already having the best offensive season of all time pretty much and, and you're going to improve somehow by bringing in an all-star caliber player but defensively and this team was bad matter of fact let me pull it up okay so we're looking at the nba advanced metrics and we are sorted by defensive rating obviously the timberwolves are the best defensive team in the league but where are the pacers as a matter of fact offensive rating you guys can see number one in the league pacers by a whole point here to the bucks but defensive rating where are the pacers obviously if you want to win it all you want to go to the nba finals you want to have a deep playoff run you want to be high in both offensive rating and defensive rating you don't want to be first and offensive but last and defensive like, that's just not a good mix so where are they we do not see them anywhere we don't see them anywhere we keep scrolling and bang all the way pretty much at the bottom the hornets wizards and pistons are worse but the pacers are the fourth worst team when we talk about defense pascal was probably better defensively you know a year or two ago three years ago but he's still solid you're not bringing in like a deep boy caliber player like an all defense type player but he's definitely an upgrade at you know whoever they were running out there ob Toppin, or i mean i know they would change up the lineups you'd see jalen smith you'd see some different people but now you got pascal siakam he's definitely an above average defender so i think this is a trade where benefits them offensively which i don't even think they needed a benefit offensively but def defensively too they're getting that upgrade whereas again i've talked about a trade say to the warriors if siakam was to go there that would be kind of weird and i don't think the warriors would be fixed just with adding siakam they have holes offensively and defensively but with this pacers team it's it honestly feels like the perfect fit thick like can y'all name a team that Siakam, if he got traded to, would be more of a perfect fit. It's kind of hard to come up with a team. So now we got to talk about the Pacers for this season because Halliburton's coming back this week, it looks like. I thought it would be another, you know, one to two weeks. It looks like he's returning soon. Maybe, you know, come, I don't know when their next game is, like Friday or this weekend. Halliburton could be returning. And the Pacers, where do they stack up against other teams across the league, especially in the Eastern Conference? Now, I think there's a clear top tier of teams. You got the Celtics, you got the Bucks, and you got the 76ers. Now, after that, there's a drop off. Are the Pacers now in that tier? I will. I would say so with Halliburton, Siakam, Turner, and again, they got a bunch of twos and threes that are solid. Um, I would put them in that tier. Now, obviously, you'd want to see it first. You want to see it in action. It might start slow, but they got time they got you know three four months before the playoffs roll around to get this chemistry up the all-star break isn't even here so doing this trade early is definitely going to help them and also like i said earlier it's going to help them try to re-sign siakam for the long term because he's going to be around the team for longer it's basically it's not like a tryout but you know what i'm saying like it's like a tryout it's like a trial run see if you want to stay with this team for the next five years if they turn out to start playing really bad and go on a big losing streak i mean that's kind of the only way I don't see Siakam signing with them, but is that going to happen? No, probably not. But yeah, I think like, so there's a drop off after those three teams, I would say. And now I think the Pacers are like that fourth team in the East. I know that's a little crazy to say because some of y'all are going to like the Cavs when they get Garland and Mobley back. Some of y'all like the Knicks with Brunson or the Heat. If Jimmy's healthy, you got Hero and Bam. They're obviously going to be tough in the playoffs. There's a lot of really good teams. I put the Pacers at the bottom of that tier now with the celtics bucks and six i think they're probably now the fourth best team in the east i did a video i don't know if it was yesterday or the day before where i pretty much ranked every single team and put them in where are they like can they win a championship now do i see that happening are they just contenders like they're probably just gonna lose in the conference championship or something like that the conference finals or are they one to two pieces away i put the pacers in one to two pieces away they got that piece yesterday now i think honestly they could win the nba finals it's gonna be tough again i'm a guy that cares a lot about experience if you haven't been there before it's gonna be tough to win four best of seven playoff series in a row what the pacers do have going for them is the in-season tournament i know it's a very small sample size it was like two to three four intense games i mean if you want to count the the pool play or whatever where they played everybody like once or whatever the pacers dominated they ended up losing um to the lakers but that was kind of a high intensity atmosphere and the pacers performed i know it's nothing like the playoffs but that's kind of what we have to go off of and they hooped in that atmosphere and talking about the raptors i know a lot of people have been waiting for this moment but 
The Toronto Raptors team is now in the hands of Scotty Barnes. He is officially their new franchise player. It was obviously Kawhi, then it was kind of Siakam. Now it's Scotty Barnes. It is a time for the Raptors to build around Scotty Barnes. They have Emmanuel quickly, who I like. I think he's going to be really good. He's already been good this year for them, but next year, I think he's going to, you know, take a jump, maybe even be most improved. I don't know if that's crazy to say, but I think he has that type of potential. You got RJ Barrett. You got obviously OG's gone. Pascal's gone. You got Dennis Schroeder. It's going to be you to see what this team does. They got a lot of draft picks. They got young players. This is not necessarily a rebuild for them, but the word that I'm hearing a lot of people use is it is a retooling for the Raptors. So not a complete rebuild. They're kind of still in a competitive mode, but like they're not really going for it all. It's just a kind of a quick fix, a quick try and it's like a mini rebuild. It's like a mini rebuild. I know everybody wants to hear trade grades sometimes. So I will give the Pacers an A minus for this trade. And that is assuming that they are going to extend and re-sign Pascal Siakam. If it was guaranteed, like they did the trade and then extended him right away, then I would say that's like a like an A or an A plus. Like that would be really good for the Pacers. I'm gonna say A minus just because there is that chance that they don't get him. And also you gave up three first, you gave up Bruce Brown, not the end of the world. Again, those first are somewhat valuable, but they're gonna be end of the first round picks more than likely. For the Raptors, I'm gonna give them like a B or a B minus because again, I'd like to see them bring in a young player with potential as we talked about earlier and they pretty much failed to do that. They just got these first round picks that will most likely be at the end of the first round. Let me know in the comments, who do you guys think won the trade? Was it the Pacers or was it the Raptors? Sub up you guys have, we're on the way to 2K, we're grinding on this channel every single day. Turn on notice so you don't miss another video. Click the video, pop up your screen right here if you haven't seen it yet.